What's up everybody, it's Rocky from Zurb and I got another great lesson for you. Last week we introduced you to the new cards component in Foundation 6.3 and this week we're gonna take it one step further with Flexbox. Now Flexbox has been out for a long time and it's supported by a lot of browsers and there's a lot of amazing things you can do with Flexbox. So Foundation 6.3 not only came out with a new cards component but also a lot of Flexbox helpers that'll help you build your layouts much faster. So we're gonna combine those two new features together to make flex cards. So this week we're gonna show you all the amazing things that you could do with Flexbox and the new foundation cards to really build your UI much faster. So let's check it out. All right, so we have some cards here that we have built just using the regular uh, card classes that we discussed in the last lesson. So the first thing we're gonna do is activate Flexbox mode. So we're gonna go into our Foundation 6 SAS project. We're gonna open up the Assets folder. And you're gonna find a file called app.scss. And in here, this app.scss controls all the default classes that are included in Foundation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the regular Foundation grid. We're going to turn on the Foundation Flex grid by just commenting one out and uncommenting the other in. And we'll save that. And then, really importantly, and already you see uh, something changed over here. So this is really important. We're gonna go to line 47 here and we're going to comment out the float classes. We're gonna comment in the foundation flex classes. So now that way we have Foundation Flexbox classes available to us. And we have a lot of modifier classes that we can use to really get the results that we want. So that's all we need to do in this file. So we'll go ahead and hop out of here. We're gonna open the settings file up. And we're gonna scroll down to this variable called global flexbox. From false, we're gonna set this to true. And really, um, you can use Flexbox on every project now. It's well supported in many browsers and uh, it really does save a lot of time and effort as you'll find out. So now that we've set this global Flexbox true variable, we're gonna get out of that and we're gonna take a look at our cards. So what we have here is three cards side by side and each one is shorter than the other. And then we have some other ones here that are sized using the grid classes, uh, so I'll show you how that's done. So the first three cards up top, we're actually using a block grid to size those. That means that every column inside of this uh, designation, small up two, small up three, will actually have equal sizing. So each column that contains a card will have equal width. Uh, up to three on a medium and large screen, and then uh, down to two cards side by side or two columns side by side on a small screen. So we have our three columns there. Each card has a different height. Now what if we wanted all the cards to have the same height? Well, we have a class that you can add to the column. It's called a flex container. So if we add the flex container class to each of the columns, what that does is it makes the columns display flex, which is not the case by default because that's maybe not what you would want it to do. But in this case, it is what we want it to do. So by doing that, what happens is it wants all the columns not only to be the same height, but the content inside of them will also be the same height. So now all these cards that sit in the same row will be the same height. So that's a really nice way of setting this up. And this is something that Flexbox allows us to do. So this Flex Container is a Flex Helper class uh, that was added in Foundation 6.3. And there's a lot more, uh, but this is one that will get you equal height content inside of your columns. So now we have equal size uh, cards inside of our columns. And that's actually gonna set us up for the next really cool feature uh, in Foundation's Flex Cards. So the next really cool thing about Flex Cards is that 
The cards actually are distributed in a vertical fashion. So we have an image here and then we have a card section and we can have other content below or above that. All those pieces are laid out vertically. So I'll show you what I mean here. So we have our card, which is our outer wrapper right here. And we have an image inside of it. And since this image is not inside the card section, it doesn't have any padding around it, as you can see here. The padding that you see in green here is actually created by the column itself. So we also have our card section wrapper. So card section is using a flex property called flex grow. And so what that means is that this middle section here, or this section here that has the card content, will actually grow to take up as much space as it needs to fill the entire height of this column, which it's doing as you can see here. But you're really gonna see that when I add another piece of content. So what I'm gonna do is use a card section, uh, sorry, card divider. And a card divider is built into Foundation's cards, and we can put anything we want in here. So we're gonna put a button in here, uh, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I put a button in here, and what this, what this does is it automatically places this at the bottom of the card. Now, it's hard to tell here because this is the tallest card, so it's dictating the entire height of all the other cards in the row. So you can see that they both got a little bit taller to match the height of this tallest card right here. And now we have a button that's pinned down at the bottom. And that's actually what we would want it to do in most cases. So now I'm gonna take this button, I'm gonna add it to the shorter card and you're really gonna see what I'm talking about here. So now I added it to the shorter card and you can see that it's still pinned down to the bottom and this card section here that contains the main content is actually growing to fill the added extra space in the middle. So this is great. This is actually how we would normally want to lay out our cards. And so now we can make this button expanded if we want by adding the expanded class right there. And of course we can go ahead and add another card divider at the bottom here. Okay, and so the card divider is actually only gonna take up as much space as it needs for the content that's inside of it, and that includes the padding. So what if we did a menu uh, with a couple links? And so we can actually do that as well. And now you have created some actions at the bottom. And this looks more like the setup of a material card right here. So another cool thing to note about using this technique is that each row will have its height calculated by the tallest card in its row. So what that means is we're using a block grid here. So if we add more than three cards, they're gonna start stacking onto the next row. So let's go ahead and copy these three cards. We're going to add them into this row. So now that we have six cards, so the next three cards flow down to the next row. We're going to make one of these cards just a little bit shorter so you can see what I'm talking about here. So you can see that the top section of cards, which I haven't touched, are the height of this first card in the column. So this is the tallest one, so they all match that height. Now, in the second set, we actually, the shorter, uh, the second card is actually dictating the height now. And so that way, they're actually a little bit shorter than the ones up here, because each row's height is calculated by the tallest piece of content inside of each row. So now that this has flowed down to a second row, the second card is actually the tallest one and that is actually what's dictating the height. So a really cool way to create very even, evenly spaced layouts, things that look uh, consistent across the rows. All right, 
So now you might want to create something called a card group. So a card group is where you actually remove the spacing between the cards and they're all butted up against each other. Now you could totally do that because we're using the grid to size the cards. This makes it a lot easier to do this and really recommend doing it this way. So your card actually lives inside of the foundation grid. So right now we have a row and then we have four column card containers. So four plus four plus four, that equals 12. So now we've completed our row. And then we have another row with four, four, four columns. So what we're gonna do is add a class of collapse to the row. And what that does is it removes all the padding in, in the columns of that row. So now you can see that they're all butted up against each other and maybe this is the look you're going for. Now you notice that there's uh, spacing at the bottom of each card. Now that is controlled in the settings file. So if we go to card, we'll see that there is a card margin. So this is actually a margin bottom uh, and we can set this to zero if we'd like and really remove all the margin bottom on the cards. And so now our first row has the collapse class on it, it removes all the padding so these cards are butted up against each other. This is something that's called a card group. And then these other ones don't have that, but we have removed the bottom uh, margin on those. So this might be a way that you might wanna set your cards up as well. Okay, so now we're gonna add a card divider and we're gonna use some Flexbox helper classes to really align our content properly. So we're gonna create a card divider and then we're gonna put some things inside of that. So let's start with an image. So we're gonna make this a 30 pixel image. Don't need all this other stuff right now. Should definitely put an alt tag in there. And what we're going to do is add a span with the class of price. And we're going to, let's say, make that $50. Okay. So we have an image, we have some text in there. We can even add a button. Uh, and then we'll just say, bye. Okay. So, and we also want to give that a class of button. There we go. Okay, so now we have three things inside of this card divider. Now you can see that these three things have different heights to them. So the text is a little bit shorter, the image is a little bit taller, and the button is the tallest. So this is a great example of how to use some of the flex classes to really get the results that you want. So one thing I definitely want to do is to space these things apart. So let's say I want to space each one individually the same space apart. So we could do that. First, let's make this a flex container. And what this does is it adds display flex to this uh, container. And so now I can use any of the Flexbox helper classes. So let's start with one of the align classes. So we can align right. So if we align right now, everything shifts over to the right, but that's not really what we want. We can align center. And so now all three pieces align to the center. Again, that's not really what we're going for. So let's try something else. Let's try align space. So this uses the justify content space between property. And so what we have now is these items evenly spaced. So the spacing on the left, the spacing in between, and the spacing on the right are all even. So that's pretty good, but that's not what we're really going for. So let's go with justify. So these are all Flexbox helper classes built into foundation, align justify is what we're going for there. All right, and now let's vertically align this. So there's some vertical align classes, obviously align top and align bottom, but you can also align middle. 
So we're gonna go ahead and align middle. Now you can see that everything beautifully aligns to the middle. So you got a lot of awesome Flexbox helper classes to really help you create the exact type of layout you want. You can see how this is really powerful for cards because now you can get the results that you want. So just uh, make sure that you make the card divider a flex container in a later version of foundation that will be built in. Um, but this flex container class activates uh, display flex on that. And then you can use any of the align classes built into foundation. You can combine them. So there's horizontal here, align justify, and then the vertical align middle gets us the result that we want. All right, I hope you loved all the new Flexbox skills you just learned. Now we put out lessons every week, so make sure you hit subscribe up above so that way the Yeti can pimp his cave with some new ice furniture. That's it for this week, see you next week.